Today I want to talk to you about giving your best. Giving your best. When I was a little boy, I can remember my parents raising me that whatever we did, just give it your, your best. I never was in high school an A student. I actually in high school was never a B student. <laughs> and it's because I didn't give my best. And when I went to college, I actually made A's and B's, but it's because I was having to pay for it. Can I get an amen? <laughs> and so I, 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 the, the, the very theme of, of what we're, we're talking about today is, is just that God has called you and I. He has called this church. He has called this ministry. He's called you as an individual. When it comes to living for Christ, he's saying, I want nothing but your best. He says, I want nothing but your best. And I want you to know that sometimes serving Jesus Christ, giving him my best means that there's some pain involved. Serving the Lord sometimes means it's not easy. Serving the Lord sometimes is one of the most difficult things you'll ever do. In fact, it would be a lot easier to just succumb to my attitudes of flesh than it would be to do what God's called me to do. You see, I'm, I'm a firm believer that somewhere we had this conversation with somebody just the other day that I, that I think somewhere the church has lost the standard that God has called us when it comes to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. That we've built our Christian life on that, well, you know, I do this and I do that and I do this and I do that. Quit worrying about what you do and be concerned with what you don't do. Because I believe that the world is dying and going to hell today because of what the church is not doing, not what they do. And you and I have an obligation to just share the good news of Jesus Christ. Quit worrying about if they have too many tattoos and too many piercings or they, they drink this particular beer or drink that particular wine. Just, just bring them to Jesus Christ. Let God do his work in their life and you quit being judgmental. It's between us and the Lord, but at the end of the day, are you and I doing our best? Say best. Are we doing our best? in this thing for Jesus Christ. And I want you to know, if you're not doing your best, that's the call that God has for us today. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 says, Therefore also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that easily makes us fall. And let us run with endurance. Say endurance. That means our very best. Let us run, giving our very best to what God has called us to do. If God's called you to be a minister, do your very best. If he's called you to be a team leader, do your very best. If he's called you to be a lay pastor, do your very best. If he's called you to be a church member, be your very best. If he's called you to be a father, be the very best father. A mother, be the best. You and I need to to embrace this morning that what God is calling us in everything that we do, if you're an employee, be your best. Be your best at whatever it is that you do for Christ. And he says, and let us run with our best. It says, with endurance, the race that's set before us, looking to Jesus. Not looking to the church, not looking at individuals, not looking at people that have hurt you. Looking to Jesus Christ, the very author, the very finisher of our faith. Oh, man. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand throne of God. Look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. We're going to just do these two verses of scripture and we'll pray. Philippians 3.13 says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, Paul is writing. He says, forgetting those things that are behind me, forgetting those things that are past, I reach toward those things that are ahead. Say, my best. That's what Paul was saying. Paul said, I can't take what I've done in my past into my future and ever be successful. But I've got to leave that behind. Paul said, my best. 
forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward to those things which are best, reaching forward to those things that are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you today for the spirit that we've already felt in this place. Father, as we leave in just a few moments, Father, may we have a new commitment to do our very best for you. Father, may you just reveal now in the stillness and quietness of this moment, Father, may you reveal to us some things already that, Father, we need to be recommitted to. We need to make a new commitment of best in that area of our life. And the church said amen. You can turn in your Bibles with me if you want to. We're going to the Old Testament this morning to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 13. You guys don't see me go to the Old Testament very often. I love the Old Testament. For some reason we just don't end up there a lot. I'm talking to you about a group of people that gave it their best, got discouraged, and quit giving their best. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 17, it says, And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt into a land that's flowing with milk and honey, our best. God used Moses in the life of the Israelites who were in bondage in Egypt for hundreds of years, and God sent Moses to them, and he says, I will, by the grace and the strength of God, I will lead you out of this bondage out of this imprisonment, out of this slavery. They were beaten, they were killed, they were murdered. Their families were beaten, their wives were beaten and raped, their children, they lived in a state that I'm not sure today with my vocabulary that I can paint you as dark a picture as they were having to live in. God sent Moses into their life, and basically, if you'll allow me a little freedom, he says, I'm going to bring you to a land that flows with milk and honey. I'm going to bring you something that's better. I'm going to bring you in your life to the best. Please know today that there's one thing that God wants for you. He wants the best for you. Would you say amen to that? God wants the best for you in every area of your life. He wants the best. I remember, and I've shared this story with y'all before, our son Josh, uh, when he was very young in kindergarten and first grade, had a problem with saying his R's. In fact, his favorite country music singer was Wandy Twavis. (laughs) And I remember we used to laugh and pick about that all the time, and uh, mom would get mad every time we laughed and picked at her baby about that, and we got him into some speech therapy, and he finally learned to position his tongue wherever it needed to be and form his mouth where it needed to be, so that we're very proud today that we have a 36-year-old that can say Randy Travis, say amen. amen. And, and so uh, it took a while, and uh, I remember him coming home from school one day, and he got off the bus, and he would come into the door, I think he was in the first grade, and, and he threw his little... <laughs> yak pack down back then uh, threw his little yak pack down and he ran into his room and D and I look at each other and we get concerned and, and, and we go into there and we were, he was just on his bed just to cry and we said Josh what's wrong and I, 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 he didn't want to talk about it we said Josh what happened and he, he didn't want to talk about it and, and you can imagine parents how you get concerned real quick with that right I mean it's like hang on just a second and I had to finally just get rough with him and I picked him up and I sat him down I said you're either going to tell daddy what happened or I'm going to give you a whipping. And he says, but daddy, he goes, I was in a foot race today, and I lost, and I did my very best. <laughs> and so D looks at me with all this, like, shame on, you know, at me, and I'll never forget, I look at him, I said, well, well, Josh, as long as you do your best, then it doesn't matter about the race that you run. 
And he looked at me and he goes, but daddy, you don't understand. I got beat by a girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, might I tell you that maybe in our Christian walk, in our Christian life, maybe we're getting beat by an enemy uh, that we think we shouldn't be defeated by. But God asks us to do our best all the time. All the time. So, I'm not going to go into the whole story because I've got some other things I want to share. So, God sent Moses to the Israelites to lead them out of the land of Egypt. A lot of things transpired, and finally, Pharaoh's like, okay, go. And they lead them out of the land of bondage. Many of you have seen the movies, and you even see the part where Moses is just beside himself and what they can do and what they will do and there the enemy is coming behind them and there's the Red Sea and all of you know what happens next the Red Sea does what the Red Sea parts and the Bible says that they go across on dry land and they get across and the enemy says well if God's people can do it we can too and and they found out that watch this people that don't belong to Jesus can't necessarily do what people that belong to Jesus can do because they got swallowed up by the very sea amen amen, amen. They have miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. They had begun to grow. They were there in the wilderness, and I'm going to use this for example because it was less than a half a day's journey. So I'm going to say they were in the wilderness just 10 miles from the land, the promised land. Just 10 miles from the land that flowed with milk and honey. And they begin to murmur. They begin to complain. They begin to not do their best. They begin to put their eyes on what color the carpet was in the church versus the mission. They begin to put their eyes on, on, on what this was about and what that was about and could we do this and could we do that versus keeping their eye on the cross and the very mission that God had called them to have and just their best. And I'm excited. I'm excited that where we are with Lion Camp right now and what's going on and, and the teams we have that are growing and the teams that are building and that we actually had people from the BGCT here this past week and are looking at what we can do to expand this and we're paying off that. I mean, all of that's good, but listen to me. You and I as a church can never keep our eyes or get our eyes off of the cross and that the number one thing we had to do is share the good news of Jesus Christ. When we do that, if we ever do that, we're no longer giving our best. God is crying out to you today. He says in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. God gave us his best, amen? That whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but they would have everlasting life. I'm asking you today, are you doing your best? When you're playing football, are you doing your best? When you're playing baseball, are you doing your best? When you're playing soccer, are you doing your best? I could go on and on when you're playing, where's my volleyball? When you're playing volleyball, are you doing your best? When you and I are at school doing what we do, are we doing our best? When we're out in the world, at work, everywhere we go, everything we do, I'm asking you, are you receiving the call of God to do your best? Are you really being the best husband? Are you being the best wife? Are you being the best team leader? Are you being the best pastor? Are you being the best friend? God called us to be our best. And sometimes that's not easy. The sad picture is those that have been delivered from the wilderness, that have been delivered from bondage, got within a half a day's journey got within a half a day's journey of the promised land and they stopped doing their best they began to doubt but i've been through so much moses you don't know what we've been through moses i've lost some of my family on this journey moses i've lost some of my friends on this journey moses i've lost some children on this journey moses i've lost some grandchildren on this journey you have no idea how hard this journey has been i, I can't go on and they stopped doing their best. If you and I only believe that we can do this much, 
then it will be this much that we do. If we believe that a, 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 a town that has 400 in it, that the most we'll ever run was 50, then that's all we would have ever had in here. What I'm telling you is this. There's no walls that are built here now that can't be busted out to reach the masses if you'll get busy about doing your best. Anything that we set our minds to, you and I ought to commit to best. To best. There's a cowboy saying that I can't repeat. But I don't want to halfway do nothing. I don't want to halfway do this thing. I don't want to have a casual Christian life. I don't, I don't want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ as anything but my best. He deserves my best. And whatever I do, he deserves my best. If you and I will listen to our coach, we will accomplish greater things than we ever believed we could accomplish in our lives. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Are you giving your best? Are you giving your best? Today only you know. Only you know. Only you know. This morning I could, I could do a public invitation and I could say something like this. I could say, if you're here today and you're really willing to give your best, would you stand? And I don't want to do that because then there'd be people who would stand just because other people were standing. I could even ask you to come up here to the front, my leaders, my team leaders. I could say, are you really giving your best? And some of you would come just because it was the thing to do. So we're not going to do that, but right where you are with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm asking you to seek God's face and answer the question, are you giving your best? Are you really giving your best? Because he gave his best for you and I. He gave his best. He gave his best. And I'm asking you, are you giving your best? God's asking you if you're giving your best. And if not, I'm just asking you right where you are, right where you sit, just make that fresh commitment. Just make that fresh commitment. God, I commit to my best. I haven't been given my best, but God, I, I, I commit. I make a fresh commitment to my best. That's all he asked. He didn't ask you to never fail again. He didn't ask you to never sin again. He's asking you, are you giving me your best? What a powerful message that that video just played.